54 Chinese officials robbed of over 6 million yuan, but no one reported it. Great Depression Hits China CCP finally resorts to this move. Where is Gao Jisheng? Family of rights lawyer testifies before Congress. Advocate, China seeks to use the U pandemic treaty to expand its social credit system globally. It's all covered in today's China Truths. 54 Chinese officials robbed of over 6 million yuan, but no one reported it. According to NTD TV, 54 officials in Zimadian, Hunan province had over 6 million yuan stolen from their homes, but none of them reported the crime. So what is the reason behind this? According to reports from mainland Chinese media, between September 2011 and December 2012, Wang Xingli and his accomplices stole more than 3 million yuan worth of property from the secretaries of the party committees in Xingyang County, Pingyu County, Xiping County, and Tanga County. They also burglarized the homes of several county-level officials in five counties in Zimadian City, resulting in the theft of more than 6 million yuan worth of property from 54 officials. However, before Wang Xingli was arrested, none of the officials whose homes were burglarized reported the theft to the police. According to reports, Wang Xingli's methods of theft were not particularly special, simply using a small screwdriver and key to pick locks and enter homes. His specialty was targeting corrupt officials. Before each theft, he would conduct extensive reconnaissance, even observing for months, and most of the officials he targeted had problems. Wang Xingli understood the psychology of these corrupt officials, who rarely deposited their money in banks and instead stored it in cash at home. As a result, he frequently operated in luxury villa areas, believing that these officials would not report the theft to the police as they were not clean. Wang Xingli was eventually caught after he and his accomplices broke into the home of the chairman of the board of the Xingyang Rural Commercial Bank on December 7, 2012, and stole just over 10,000 yuan. After being caught, Wang Xingli admitted to stealing from 54 officials. However, some officials were afraid that their stolen wealth would be exposed and denied being robbed. Others changed the furniture in their homes out of fear that the thief would recognize them. Zhao Xinghua, the county party secretary of Xinjiang, was one of the robbed officials who implied or forced the police to change the interrogation records, changing the amount stolen from him from more than a million yuan to just 6,040 yuan, 900,000 yuan to 30,000 yuan, and 300,000 yuan to just 300 yuan, among other changes. According to insiders, after the interrogation records were changed, some of the stolen goods were taken and divided among the police. The Chinese Communist Party CCP, media once commented that there are three strange things behind officials being robbed, first, not reporting the theft at home, second, the official's property shrinking, and third, the transcript game, which reduces the thief's charges. In recent years, thieves have frequently exposed corrupt officials, attracting public attention. Many Chinese people even praised these thieves, saying, thieves fighting corruption, hitting the nail on the head. Great Depression Hits China CCP finally resorts to this move. The Chinese economy is experiencing a serious decline and its finances are facing a crisis. On April 22, state media Shanghai Securities News cited informed sources who disclosed the above news that, starting from May, Changshu City will fully pay the salaries of civil servants, public employees, and personnel from various state-owned enterprises and digital renminbi. If this news is true, it will be the first case in China of using digital currency to pay salaries. In addition to Changshu, Yangzhou City in Jiangsu Province has also started pilot programs to pay salaries in digital renminbi. It is expected that more local governments will follow suit. Public opinion is filled with skepticism, and many people are worried about whether the method of using digital currency to pay salaries will eventually become widespread from national public institutions, state-owned enterprises, private enterprises, individuals, and eventually to the entire country. On domestic social media platforms, 
Netizens commented that it's not secure, money has become real digital currency, if it's yours, it's yours, if it's not, it's not. Don't think it's a good thing. Many people believe that digital renminbi is easier to control than cash, and authorities can more arbitrarily restrict its use or even confiscate it. Therefore, netizens ridiculed, congratulations, electronic food stamps, digital renminbi is prohibited from being exchanged for foreign currency, disobedient people can be raided with just one click. Some have also quoted the governor of the Central Bank of Sweden, who said, a conscientious country will not use digital currency. It is very dangerous in the event of war, natural disasters, hackers, or network failures. The CCP has always touted that the digital renminbi can facilitate personal settlements and monitor officials' assets. However, analysts point out that the true purpose of promoting the digital currency is not for these reasons. Radio Free Asia spoke with Professor Xie Tian of the Moore School of Business at the University of South Carolina, who examined the CCP's four main goals in introducing the digital currency. First, it is to monitor the people and maintain the regime's power. Second, the CCP has printed one or two quadrillion yuan, which is the main culprit of inflation. However, with the promotion of digital currency and the announcement of the invalidation of paper currency, the CCP slowly erases the evidence of excessive money printing and the resulting inflation. The third objective of promoting digital currency is to deprive corrupt officials of their illicit gains. Many corrupt officials hide cash at home, but after the promotion of digital currency, they dare not deposit the money in the bank, and they cannot use it without depositing it in the bank. The fourth objective is to challenge the US dollar. Xia believes that overall, the CCP is trying to salvage its financial decline through digital currency, but it will not succeed, and China's economic recession may continue to worsen. In China, the prices of ordinary consumer goods, from vegetables and meat to household and daily consumer goods, are all rising. There is no deflation at all. The real problem in China now is rising prices, industrial chain transfer, economic decline, and increasing unemployment, which are causing a decrease in purchasing power. Chinese people are very worried about the future, leading to an increase in savings rates. The result of this vicious cycle is that China's economy will enter a longer and deeper recession. Xia warns that China's economy may have already begun to enter a depression, which is a very frightening prospect for the future. Where is Gao Jisheng? Family of rights lawyer testifies before Congress. Gao Jisheng, a prominent Chinese human rights lawyer who has been nominated three times for the Nobel Peace Prize, was last seen in August 2017 and has not been heard from since. At that time, Gao had already been subjected to torture by Chinese police during his previous disappearances. It has been more than five years, and his wife, Geng He, who fled China to the United States with their two children in 2009, still doesn't know if he is still alive. On April 20th, which is Gao's 59th birthday, Geng was one of the witnesses testifying before a subcommittee of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. The hearing was titled China's Political Prisoners, Where's Gao Jisheng? to raise awareness of the fact that Gao's whereabouts remain unknown. Following the hearing, Geng said, there has not been any information about my husband for the last 2067 days, which is equivalent to about five years and eight months. I am very sad. Geng said Chinese authorities have prevented her family members from leaving their place of residence in China to look for Gao. Gao, a self-taught lawyer and devoted Christian, began practicing law in 1996 and has defended victims of government land seizures, families of miners seeking compensation after their loved ones died in coal mining accidents, persecuted Christians, and adherents of Falun Gong. Geng spoke about her husband's dream of seeing China become a free, democratic, and constitutional country like the United States. This dream has motivated him to strive for 20 years. In 2005, Gao Jisheng wrote open letters to CCP General Secretary Hu Jintao and Premier Wen Jiabao, asking the authorities to stop the torture and persecution of Falun Gong believers, indicating that the CCP's persecution was extinguishing the conscience and morality of the nation. Before his disappearance, 
Gao was placed under house arrest after being released from prison in August 2014, having served prison time for his conviction of inciting subversion of state power in 2006, a catch-all charge the Chinese regime often uses against dissidents. Ging emphasized that her husband has not violated any of China's laws but is being persecuted by the CCP. In an interview with NTD English following the hearing, Rep. Chris Smith from New Jersey, chairman of the House subcommittee, said it was important to bring renewed attention to what's happening in China. Rep. Smith said, All of us need to become much more aware of the brutality that every day is being forced upon wonderful Chinese men and women and children, either because of their faith or because of their political or because of their ethnicity. He named the Tibetans, Uyghurs, Falun Gong practitioners, and Christians as victims of China's persecution. Rep. Chris Smith added, And so this hearing was to bring renewed attention to two wonderful political prisoners, men who have just stood up for everyone else's rights, and now their rights have been completely abridged by the Chinese Communist Party, and to push for their release. Advocate, China seeks to use the U pandemic treaty to expand its social credit system globally. The World Health Organization, WHO, is advocating for a pandemic treaty and proposing revisions to the existing International Health Regulations IHR, to reinforce its stance during public health emergencies. In addition, the proposals broaden the definition of emergencies to cover potential threats, not just actual harm. The draft treaty includes a definition of One Health that encompasses all events in the biosphere that may impact human well-being. The WHO Director General will have the exclusive power to make decisions on this matter. Countries will be obligated to ratify the WHO agreements. Reggie Littlejohn, President of Women's Rights Without Frontiers, warned that if the proposed amendments and pandemic treaty are passed, the WHO would move from being an advisory body to being a compulsory body that the words non-binding is suggested to be deleted. She raised concerns about the One Health approach, arguing that it would undermine national sovereignty, as it would enable the WHO to identify health risks based on their assessment of a pandemic or potential pandemic, including risks to animals, plants, or the environment. In that case, the WHO could move in the concerned country not just based on a human pandemic or germ but also animals, plants, or the environment. So that is where our personal medical freedom or personal sovereignty would be destroyed. Little John warned that the proposed treaty includes a section on censorship of misinformation and disinformation, which would allow the WHO to identify and censor those who disagree with their views. She asserted that this would result in increased surveillance and censorship, similar to the UN and World Economic Forum's plans for a vaccine passport or digital ID system. Little John also drew parallels to China's social credit system, which was implemented during the pandemic. The health QR code system in use throughout China's three years of extreme zero-COVID measures is seen as a surveillance tool of the regime. The color of a code on your phone determines whether you are allowed to leave the community grounds, eat in restaurants, or even be admitted to a hospital to give birth. Codes were allegedly turned yellow or even red, indicating infection, for citizens who complained about the strict pandemic measures. Furthermore, Little John noted that the WHO had downplayed information that could reflect negatively on China. She said, they followed China's lies, that there was no human-to-human -human transmission, that we should not stop flights from China because that's somehow racist, etc. They just parroted China's lies, and so many people got sick. And so many people died because of the mismanagement of the World Health Organization. Little John stated that given the Chinese Communist Party's control over global organizations, they may attempt to replicate their surveillance approach in other countries worldwide. In her words, and CCP leader, Xi Jinping has said that he wants to have a major hand in constructing some kind of global governance. And I believe that they're doing that through the World Health Organization, and this parallel track of China's social credit system through the surveillance, and the social listening, and the central bank digital currency, trying to track the entire world in like a Chinese-style gulag. With all 194 nations in the WHO set to vote on the amendments by May 2024, Little John encouraged concerned American citizens to sign the American Sovereignty Declaration at SovereigntyCoalition.org. She emphasized that this is an effort to defend national sovereignty and personal medical freedom from threats posed by the WHO. 
Littlejohn also advised citizens to alert their senators and congressional representatives about the scheme, saying, because this is something that our legislature really is asleep to, so it's really important to wake them up. Don't forget to comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.